slowcore is a rather underrated subgenre of alternative rock that came into existence during the late 80s. Consisting of slow building, minimal arrangements, and a reflective nature, slowcore is an offshoot of both indie and alternative rock. The subgenre takes these normally energetic styles and converts them into melancholic soundscapes, contemplative lyrics as well, usually shedding light on darker themes such as depression, alienation, and early adulthood struggles. In recent years, the slow-building, introspective nature of slowcore has found a new audience with teenagers and 20-somethings. So today, I'll be covering 10 essential slowcore records. These 10 records have been incredibly influential within the genre, so without further ado, let's dive into the list in no particular order. Number 10. Slint's 1991 sophomore record, Spiderland, while not inherently slowcore, influenced the overall scene greatly in retrospect. This is a record I could talk about all day, so let's jump right in. Released in the midst of the alternative rock boom of the early 90s, Spiderland takes a radically different approach to songwriting. Long cuts that take their time building, before reaching a powerhouse of intensity, as well as spaciousness to find this record. There are moments of absolute insanity scattered throughout that align more with math rock or post-hardcore, but the quieter moments perfectly encapsulate the idea of slowcore. Washer is perhaps the greatest example of this. Over 8 minutes in length, this cut consists of spoken word vocals and building dissonant instrumentals that create a truly unique atmosphere. The minimal but integral guitar work by David Paho creeps along, deliberate and fierce. Donny Man is another moment that is very clearly a major influence on the subgenre. Nearly its entire runtime boasts a lone guitar played with utter precision and passion. There's hardly any arrangements to speak of here, but the power of artistic patience brings Donny Man to a level of genius. The sheer intensity and otherworldly nature of Spiderland has led to its now legendary status within the underground rock scene. While you could argue it's more post-rock or post-hardcore than slowcore, all the elements are here. I'd say this one is more slowcore adjacent, but regardless, an iconic record that I highly recommend you listen to if you haven't. Number 9 Blue Tile Lounge is an interesting band to discuss, as nobody ever really mentions them. 1995's Lowercase is perhaps the closest thing to the definition of slowcore. Every track here, like Spiderland, is exceptionally long but with reason. Instead of droning on and on going nowhere, there is intention here with near flawless execution. The gorgeously somber opener, Riding, along with GM, are sparse in terms of convention, but rich in the emotional, glacier-paced musicianship. It must be a challenge playing as slowly as this, while simultaneously maintaining the smooth-as-butter melodic grasp. The amount of patience it must have taken to perfect these songs is impressive in itself. Each track builds off the next, making for an extremely strong collection of songs that grip you the entire time. With only 5 tracks running 9 minutes each on average, I can't help but feel this release is a perfect contender for this list. Minimal instrumentation with purpose, vocals of longing, and hauntingly beautiful soundscapes make this an essential slowcore album. While technically only an EP, the emotional weight lowercase holds only highlights its historical significance. Definitely check this one out. Number 8 Shoulds Feed Like Fishes is easily the most unknown record on this list, so today I'm going to try and change that. Released in 1998, this debut album was packed to the brim with memorable cuts exemplifying true melodic expertise. Slow and shoegazy, the dual male and female vocals set this band apart from most. Sarah Missing is dreamy and fuzzed out, different from the bleakness of most slowcore acts. There's a sense of childlike wonder on Feed Like Fishes, combining the sparse arrangements of slowcore with the sensitive nature of shoegaze. There's an entrancing quality here, easily stuck in your head while harboring so much intent vulnerability. All in all, there's plenty here that will quench your hunger for thought-provoking tunes. Should is a sorely overlooked band that has continued to release music over the years. If you're interested, check out the track aside and go from there. Number 7 Acetone is one of the most beloved slowcore bands of the 90s, but back then they were virtually unknown with little success. Following the tragic death of frontman Richie Lee in 2001, the band dissolved, but fortunately, this was not the end for Acetone. Newfound interest in their music led to the compilation record 1992-2001, to 
This compilation compiles some of the most noteworthy cuts from the band's five studio albums. While some of their key tracks are missing, the vast majority of the highlights are found here. The beauty of Louise alone is enough to land the band a spot on this list. Richie Lee's sensitive vocal delivery and the signature jangly guitar work is found all over this compilation. The interlocking guitars found on Germs is the epitome of acetone style. Return from the Ice and Shaker demonstrate a real knack for melody the band spent years carefully honing. This is a band I will always recommend. Acetone is truly amazing, and you will find merit in all of their records. The subtle nuances of their sound contains a real depth, making much of their discography timeless. But for the sake of convenience, this compilation will more than suffice. Number 6. Galaxy 500's 1989 record, On Fire, is largely considered to be a defining influence on shoegaze, but a clear, slowcore aesthetic lies within the washy soundscapes of On Fire. This is another one that isn't exactly slowcore, but their influence on the subgenre is undeniable. The slowed, reverby alienation of the band's sound is demonstrated most concisely here. From the heartbroken, when will you come home, to the existential questioning of Strange, there's a real consistency to the bleakness. On Fire boasts lengthy instrumental sections consisting of emotional high points commonly found within the subgenre of slowcore. The band covers so much ground here with such a simple approach, but with an inner complexity beneath the surface. Ultimately, On Fire is a record largely responsible for influencing countless acts within the alternative scene of the time. Slowcore may not totally be the sound Galaxy 500 represented, but nonetheless, it is essential listening for anyone into the general scene. Number 5. Codeine is one of the most commonly talked about acts when slowcore is the topic of conversation, but for good reason. These guys really brought a unique sound to the table in the early 90s, being the complete antithesis to loud abrasive rock music. Haunting harmonics, dissonant, drawn-out instrumentals, and introspective vocals from Steven Imrewar define this band. The White Birch is no exception. The trio disbanded shortly following the album, which adds a level of mystique. There is very little solace to be found on this groundbreaking 1994 release. The opener, C, is bare and hollow, contemplative and raw, filled with urgency but simultaneously withdrawn in musicianship, painfully slow, but words cannot describe the power behind these tracks. While the band's 1990 debut, Frigid Stars, is master class, the White Birch truly creates its own class. Lost Leader is bone-chilling, vulnerable and wounded, showcasing a slow but entrancing riff before exploding in the most intensive ways. Other tracks such as Vacancy and Ides continue on the path of sorrow, carrying the torch for this emotional mammoth of a record. The Closer, Smoking Room, knocks it out of the park, spacious and simple, but luscious and heavy. This is a dark journey, but one that is not without its glimmers of hope sprinkled throughout. The White Birch is not only an essential slowcore record, but an essential record in general. It's very unfortunate the band broke up when they did, but in a way, it does add an extra level of fascination. This is easily an a record, very highly recommended. Number 4 Bedhead is arguably the godfather of what we now know as slowcore, but all too often, these guys are criminally overlooked, both back then and now. The band's 1994 debut, What Fun Life Was, was truly a game changer for indie rock in hindsight. Their sound can be described as understated and subtle, but intense and heavy when necessary. What Fun Life Was captured the band in their most ambitious and creative period, from the beautiful metaphorical masterpiece Life Raft to the devastatingly crushing Bedside Table. The majority of this record spends its time exploring the eerie calm before the storm, but when the storm finally arrives, Bedhead unleashes their inner energy with no limits, demonstrated well on Haywire and the closing moment wind down. Matt and Bubba Kadane are truly geniuses of their craft, obsessing over every little detail on this debut record. The hushed, at times, inaudible vocal style of Matt Kadane separates Bedhead from the rest, proving they don't need overtly poppy choruses to express their message. In the end, What Fun Life Was is a record full of the key ingredients for slowcore. There's plenty of self-reflection, slow building, and three interlocking guitars for maximum depth. Really, every Bedhead record is great. However, What Fun Life Was is something very special. 
so check it out for yourself and absorb the brilliance. Number 3. I am fully aware of the many allegations that have surfaced against frontman Mark Kozilek. While these accusations are absolutely awful, I must throw praise at Red House Painters as a band and a band only. Their influence on slowcore really can't be argued, and it's sad their legacy is tarnished for many. However, the band's 1993 sophomore record, Red House Painters 1, continues to remain a slowcore classic. Grace Cathedral Park opens up the record flawlessly, showing the band in their most natural state. Katie Song is a highly regarded cut from this record. New Jersey boasts some noteworthy lyrics that hit close to home, alongside a steady riff cutting deep. Impressively tight instrumentals, strong drumming, and Mark's melodically haunting vocals make up this sophomore effort. The guitar work is absolutely incredible, being the driving force behind the band's iconic sound. In terms of influence alone, Red House Painters 1 deserves a spot on this list. It's unfortunate that a band who's helped so many people through their music is under fire for one member. All I can say is, this record is quintessential slowcore at its finest. Nothing else really needs to be said. Number 2 You can't discuss slowcore without mentioning Low. They've had an exceptionally long career, remaining active since this 1994 debut. This record sparked a real legacy for the band, with now over 10 studio releases. I Could Live in Hope is moody, bereft of light, dark and fleeting, but also authentic and raw. Two of the band's most popular tracks are found here, Words and Lullaby. Words has a killer bass line, with the vocals distant but impactful, whereas Lullaby is 10 minutes of catharsis, repeating the same riff for most of the song, but it doesn't get old. This track is full of tranquility, but it's really dark at the same time. This record plays out like a dream, typically extremely subdued. Even the cover is significant in the plight of I Could Live in Hope. The minimalism gives I Could Live in Hope character. The echoey, emotional vocals add to the appeal, creating an atmosphere of understated musicianship, poetic lyrics, and powerful execution. Most would say this is the pinnacle of low sound. I'd be inclined to agree. There's just something extremely honest about this record that brings it to the next level. The type of record that is lightning in a bottle, never to be topped. Lowe's I Could Live in Hope is a highlight of the subgenre of slowcore, packaging all the elements together in a truly evocative way. Number 1 Duster is simply one of the most original and creative bands of all time. Overlooked in the 90s, the band has seen a massive resurgence in recent years thanks to the internet. You could even argue their unexpected success has helped shine a light on slowcore as a whole. 1998 Stratosphere is an album that needs to be heard by everybody at least once. The spacey, chill soundscapes the Duster Boys are able to create are individual to them. The riffs are unique and refreshing. The ideas presented on Stratosphere, whether it be in the production department, guitar work, or the drumming, are all so dense and layered, delving into vulnerability but doing so in such unique ways. There's a dreamy, almost nostalgic vibe you get listening to Stratosphere. It's the kind of album you get lost in, creating trippy scenarios in your head while staring at a blank wall. It's oddly relatable, but also so laid back and easy to listen to. Genius is the word I'd use to describe not only Stratosphere as an album, but Duster as a whole. They are truly on a different level. From Gold Dust to The Landing to Echo Bravo to Inside Out, these songs capture a band making music solely for the passion, Going too deeply into individual tracks isn't necessary here. The entire record from start to finish is a fuzzed out journey, boasting some incredible drumming, fresh unconventional ideas, and top notch production. You can never go wrong listening to Stratosphere. This is arguably one of the most defining slowcore records of all time. These were 10 essential slowcore albums that you need to listen to if you haven't already, but honestly, this is only the tip of the iceberg. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you all later. More music-related content coming soon, here on The Music Narrative.